Ein Stuka-Verband im Angriff auf bolschewistische Panzer- und Truppenansammlungen. Unter Rumpf und Tragflächen die Bomben. Sturz! One of the deadliest and most effective airplanes of the Axis powers, the Junkers Ju-87 Stuka, owed its origin to a fearless World War I ace, and ironically to innovative American aviation visionaries in the peaceful early 1930s. After shooting down 62 planes, ranking second only to the famous Red Baron, Manfred von Richthofen, and surviving the 1914-1918 war, Frankfurt-born Ernst Udet became a stunt pilot and barnstormed over Africa, Greenland, the Swiss Alps, and South America. While visiting the United States in 1931, he observed dive bombing techniques being developed by the US Navy. Udet returned to Germany around the time that Adolf Hitler and his National Socialists came to power. Encouraged by Hermann Göring, aviation minister of the new regime, Udet demonstrated dive bombing. While the U.S. Navy embraced the dive bombing concept and the Royal Air Force ignored it, certain German leaders showed interest. Udet received overtures to help recast the German air service. Though not in a hurry to join the Luftwaffe, he offered some far-sighted technical suggestions. One was that Germany should develop a dive bomber. Hitler wanted a long-range artillery plane that would complement the German army for his planned Blitzkrieg strategy, so design work went ahead promptly. In April 1935, the Junkers Aircraft Company produced and flight-tested a single-engine prototype, and thus was born the Ju-87 Stuka. The name was derived from the German word for dive bomber, Sturzkampfflugzeug, followed by its rivals, the Arado 81, the Heinkel 118, and the Bloem and Voss H-137. The Stuka had inverted gull-shaped wings, an inline water-cooled, one 100-horsepower engine, and a large fixed undercarriage with wheel spats. Manned by a pilot and a radio man gunner, its wingspan was 45.2 feet. It had a top speed of 232 miles an hour. It mounted three 7.9 mm machine guns, and it could carry 1,100 pounds of bombs under its wings in fuselage. The former Ace even added air-driven sirens to the undercarriage legs, designed to spread fear and panic when the plane died. These trumpets of Jericho were to prove remarkably effective in combat. The Stuka was clearly ahead of its competitors, and the first of its type reached the flying units by early 1937. Simple to maintain and operate, Udet's dive bomber was to prove effective in the hands of expert pilots. The baptism of fire for the Luftwaffe's Stuka squadrons came swiftly when they were deployed to Spain in late 1937 to support General Francisco Franco's nationalist forces in the Spanish Civil War. As part of Major General Hugo Sperley's Condor Legion, which wreaked havoc on Spanish cities and towns, the Junkers Ju-87S were highly effective against both ground targets and shipping. They flew on every front where German planes served during the brutal war, which served as a valuable training ground for the Luftwaffe. Stukas had proved their worth in Spain, and production was stepped up. Stukas flew the first combat mission of World War II when 53 German panzer and infantry divisions, supported by 1,600 aircraft, swept into Poland on Friday, September 1, 1939. Three Ju-87, B-1S led by Lieutenant Bruno Dilly, took off early that day to attack the Dirschau Bridge over the Vistula River, about 11 minutes before the Nazis declared war. Accompanying the German ground forces as they surged forward, more of the dive bombers proved deadly as they destroyed Polish tanks and planes on the ground. Blasted airfields, bridges, highways, artillery emplacements, supply depots and troop concentrations, and sank all but two of Poland's warships. The Stukas gained glowing endorsements for their first major test while helping to speed the German victory. And propaganda minister Josef Goebbels boasted that the Junkers Ju-87 dive bomber was invincible. The Stuka quickly emerged as a highly visible symbol of Nazi aggression as it spread destruction and terror. During the 1939-1940 Phony War, a relatively calm period followed the fall of Poland. That ended with a bang on Friday, May 10, 1940, when Nazi Germany launched Blitzkrieg, Lightning War. 
with panzer, infantry, and airborne forces of Army Groups A and B, smashing their way westward into Holland, Belgium, and Luxembourg. Almost all of the 380 available Stukas were initially concentrated against Holland and Belgium. The planes provided close air support for airborne troops landing at several points. In France, as in Poland, the screaming Stukas had a terrifying effect on both troops and civilians. A French general reported that his men simply froze in place as waves of Ju-87s plummeted toward them. The gunners stopped firing and went to ground. The infantry cowered in their trenches, dazed by the crash of bombs and the shriek of the dive bombers, he said. They had not developed the instinctive reaction of running to their anti-aircraft guns and firing back. Five hours of this nightmare was enough to shatter their nerves. During the bitter campaign on Crete in April-May 1941, when British and Greek troops were forced to evacuate after failing to dislodge the Germans, Stukas caused heavy losses to Royal Navy ships. Three cruisers and six destroyers were sunk, and 13 other vessels were severely damaged. In the Western Desert, meanwhile, Ju-87S flew numerous sorties in close support of General Erwin Rommel's Africa Corps during its long seesaw struggle with British and Commonwealth forces. The planes destroyed many British strongpoints with incredible accuracy. By 1941, however, the Stuka was virtually obsolete. It had an unfortunate tendency to disintegrate when struck by hurricane machine guns, and its 120 mile per hour climbing speed was too slow to qualify for escort by fast fighters such as the Mi-109. RAF pilots breezily relished Stuka parties as a form of risk-free recreation, while the Stuka crews joked wryly that their planes were so sluggish that survival depended on their British opponents overshooting. Nevertheless, the Ju-87s continued in their role of attacking Allied land and sea targets and as flying artillery spearheads wherever German forces launched offensives. The last of more than 5,700 Ju-87s came off the production lines in September 1944, but the type continued in service. Some were modified as night raiders. Many were employed as glider tugs, trainers, and transports, and the Ju-87C, equipped with folding wings and a tail hook, was developed to operate from the German aircraft carrier Graf Zeppelin. The heyday of the Stuka, which had been replaced by faster and more powerful planes, was over. By April 1945, the last month of the European War, only 125 Ju-87 remained with frontline units. Besides the Luftwaffe, Stukas flew during the war with the air forces of Italy, Hungary, Romania, Bulgaria, and Croatia. The plane that had spread so much terror and destruction from Warsaw to Crete to Stalingrad, symbolizing Nazi might and ruthlessness, outlived the man who masterminded it. Ernst Udet, one of the most important planners of the Luftwaffe, he was in charge of aircraft design, production, and procurement. But his career in preparing the Luftwaffe for the coming war was stormy. Udet overindulged in cognac and turned to drugs. On November 17, 1941, he committed suicide and was buried in the Invalidenfriedhof Cemetery in Berlin. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe and comment on What Should I Do Next?